what's up guys so i promise more material like this on my channel getting away from the movie reviews and sort of just share my knowledge of videography and for my first video tutorial whatever you want to call it um i wanted to tackle green screening it's the most common thing that people ask online and it's when you get into visual effects it's probably the first thing you ever learn how to do and it is a fairly simple uh, effect nowadays especially with um the, all the different technologies and just how cheap a uh, videography equipment is is becoming so and there are plenty of tutorials online that tackle green screening with you know different softwares and things like that but again this is my process and like any project that starts with pre-production um you need to plan out your shots make sure you're you're scheduling everything right make sure you're not doing more work than you need to and um with green screening of course you're going to need a green screen or some kind of screen and it doesn't matter it, what color is it could be any color you want it to be it just as long as one solid color and the reason you use green is, is because it's the color that's less likely to show up in skin skin tones it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are but that's the one that's less least common in skin and um if you're wearing a green shirt like i am obviously you want to use blue um and that's why i use the chroma pop because it's a reversible color um there's green on one side blue on other there's a bunch of other reasons that i i went with a chroma pop um just for quality wise it's a couple hundred dollars off of being a photo i'll link it down below in the description but you can also go on amazon and get one that's fairly cheap for like 50 40 dollars um i i upgraded from that uh for many reasons quality and it started tearing in a couple places but um i was constantly moving it from place to place um, but again, I'll link that in the description as well. But you can always just go to Walmart and get a green bed sheet. Um, the downside of that is you got if you want to have blue, you're gonna have to buy two of them. Uh, it's a lot harder to set it up. And when you're setting up your green screen, you want to get it as flat as possible. And with the Chroma Pop, it's really simple. You just pop it open and just set it up. But with a bed sheet, you're gonna have to use clamps, stands, and things like that. Um, just it doesn't matter if there's a couple wrinkles in it. I, what I'm going to show you here um, will sort of help that. But what you want to do is set it up as flat as possible. Um, and then we're going to go over to this lovely diagram that I drew on, on my desk um, to show you how to set it up. All right, so when you're shooting your green screen footage, what you want to do is set it up in this fashion. Um, this is a very basic type of green screen setup. This is what I usually set up for um, my red five standing by what i used to do for um, my movie reviews so um right here is your your green screen right here and of course and what you want to do is you want to light your green screen as evenly as possible and normally it'll have two lights lighting your green screen only and then you'll have your talent stand in front of those lights at least three feet away from your green screen and then what I would do is do the traditional three-point lighting with the key, your fill, and your back. And if you have the capability to do this, I would try to light your green screen with lights that have a different color temperature um, than the lights that you're lighting your talent with. Just, again, sort of making uh, the green a little bit more contrast from your talent. It'll just be easier to key out if you do it that way. Um, I don't do it just uh, for sake of setup. Um, and the, the process that I'm going to show you um, sort of helps that out as well. So now that you got your stuff uh, shot, bring it into your editing software, make sure you edit everything. If you're doing something like I am when you're talking to the camera like like I do on Red 5 standing by, you wanna make sure you cut the video first. Make sure you're satisfied with your cut and then you're gonna bring it into your compositing software of choice. So here you are in After Effects. Um, I am a WCC subscriber. It's totally worth the money, $60 a month. So after you brought your footage in, um, and obviously if there's multiple edits, let me just do this really quick. So if like you have multiple edits like this, when you bring it in from Premiere and you sort of send it to After Effects directly, another reason why I love Adobe, um, you're gonna wanna pre-compose your, your footage. It's gonna show up something like this, but obviously you're gonna have more uh, cuts and shots. So you wanna pre-compose uh, your footage together. Um, you can obviously you might want to name something differently, but just for time's sake, we're going to leave it that way. And then after you pre-compose, um, you're going to do a couple of things first. First things first, you have all this unwanted stuff in the background and you don't want that. So what you're going to do is you're going to mask it out. Normally what you do is you would rotoscope, um, go scrub through um, your footage and sort of rotoscope around it. But for time's sake, what we're just going to do is mask out the background all right so that's a really quick really rough mask but after you've done that 
what we're going to do is if you zoom in really quick, you can see there's a lot of noise um, going on in the shot. That's really going to mess up your chroma keying. Um, so what we're going to do is um, you're going to want to remove that noise. There's plenty of software out there that um, you can do to, to remove this noise. Um, Red Giant has a really good denoiser. It's a really good one. It's a little more um, involved software, but I went up. I go with uh, Neat Video's uh, noise reduction software. It's really simple to use. What we're going to do is we're going to go in here and go ahead and remove this noise just really quick. This I'm not new up now. So, so if you zoom in and look, that is going to make keying so much easier. So what we're going to do is apply that. What you're going to do next, you're going to take that pre-composed uh, shot or your footage and duplicate it once. And now we're going to focus on the top uh, piece of footage. So the next thing you want to do is we're going to add a select selective color to that layer and we're going to choose green. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn the cyan to 100%, magenta down to negative 100%, yellow up to 100 and black up to 100. Now, if you look at the comparison um, to the last one, if you toggle this effect on and off, you have a lot more even green throughout the green screen. Now, this this step is extremely useful. When I found this step out, it made it so much easier. And it, and when you're lighting your, your 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 scene, it's a lot more forgiving if you don't light your uh, your green screen evenly. And especially with this shot, I purposely shot this one because I had this it's a shot in mind when I was going to do this tutorial. Um, that if you notice that there's I only have a key light, a backlight, and one light shooting up to the green screen behind me. And I knew I was going to use this shot because if you look, it's not all that evenly lit. There's it, The highlights are here. Um, you can see the light falling mostly on my right side. And then the left, my left side is a little bit more in shadow. But then if you apply this step, it, it's a little bit more forgiving now. And you could add one more to two more so I duplicate that and that's a huge difference you can see uh, from before and I wouldn't go over um, two of these um, effects layering these effects twice um, I wouldn't do that because then you'll start the green will start to bleed onto your talent and you don't want that so let's go ahead and delete that um, so I'm pretty satisfied with what I have here and so the next step is just to key your footage out so you get there's a lot of um, Software's out that again. Uh, Red Giant has a, a fantastic keying uh, plugin for After Effects, um, but it is very, very expensive. Um, but you can just very easily use the built in plugin uh, key light for this. So you just go ahead and add that and then select your green. But what you want to do here is turn your, your view to screen mat. Now, what you're viewing here is everything that's white will remain in your scene and everything that's black will register as transparent. So I'm not going to go over all these um, all these steps over here. So what I'm going to do is get this to a point where it looks good enough there. So now whatever whatever is black is going to register as transparent. Whatever is white is going to stay in your composite. So, and again, what a lot of people do is they go to the final results. I mean, a lot of people do is, all right, I'm done here. That um, They put their background behind it and like, oh, whew, there's, there's my key. But if you look really close, you have a lot of artifacting going on right here, right here. And that's the green bleeding over from your scene behind you and it's just when you do finally render this out it's gonna look it'll look all right but it won't look as good if you use this technique that i'm about to show you so what you want to do is leave this on screen mat and then we're going to go over to our timeline and i'm going to toggle over to here and for track mat you want to go down to the luma mat pre-comp one and boom so if you zoom in again you look at your footage and a lot of the artifacting is not there so and that is the benefit of this technique when I found this technique out it, it literally it changed my life for the better it, it really it makes your your keys so much more clean so much more crisp 
now that we have our first key out, let me put a background in here. This is the great red five standing by logo underneath here. Um, yeah, so if you look, if you look at the edges, you can see a little bit more green bleeding through. So that's this next step is going to take care of. So what you want to do is take your screen mat and your actual footage that you pre-composed last time that the two duplicates, you're going to pre-comp again. Again, you might, might want to uh, label this differently to keep for organizational sake, but right now, just for time's sake, we're not going to do that. Um, so once you have that pre-composed, you're going to want to add a mat choke to that. And what this does is if you look again at the edge of it, it removes that edge just a, a tiny bit just so you um to get rid of that green and i'm gonna change it to maybe two now just and just in case you have a little bit of green bleeding into your talent we're gonna add a hue and saturation to that and change that channel to green and then desaturate that green that is pretty much it um and again, if depending on what you're shooting, you might want to add a little uh, some light wrap to it just to um, make you fit into that scene better, just depending on what it is. But for um, stuff like this, I don't use light wrap just be because you, you know it's a fake environment and um, it just it saves time. Um, there's plenty other tutorials online for that. Red Giant again has a great plugin for light wrap. A after you're done keying, what you're going to want to do is add a final. Um, color adjustment, uh, a final um, color correction, just to fit everything in together. Uh, and normally, I, what I would do is I bring this back into Premiere and and then sort of bring it, bring it into Speed Grade and, and color correct it there. That's a really crappy quick color correction, but just to show you the that's the last step you want to do everything. It ties especially if you're um, shooting an environment. Um, compositing yourself into like uh, an environment it it really helps sell the effect better if you do a final color correction and then of course you'll do, probably do a final color grade of your entire project um but that's pretty much it um that's my process on how i do green screening but of course if you can't swing the money for after effects there's a great uh new software called hit film um it's very affordable very powerful for its price it doesn't replace uh, After Effects and Premiere for me, but it's a great video editing, um, visual effects compositing, and also you can do a little bit of 3D work in there as well. It's all crammed into one piece of software. I'll link it down in the description below, but if you can't swing the money for um, for, for After Effects, um, that's a great alternative. It's a great, um, if you're just getting into videography for video editing, um, uh, visual effects, anything like that. So that's my process on green screening. I'm sorry if I was a little boring. It's my first tutorial like this. I'm going to try to do more stuff like this on my channel, just share my knowledge of videography for, with you guys. So if you found this video helpful, if you liked watching, hit that thumbs up button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Going to be more videos like this in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, you can click right here and see more videos. Bye, Andrew.